Okay, welcome back. So we're on part two of the Making the Mark lecture, and we were just wrapping up talking about uh, graffiti and some of the graffiti that I uh, enjoy a lot. Um, and we were also then talking about dis the distinction between graffiti and street art, which is certainly a fluid and arguable distinction. And so um, it's kind of in the last part of this lecture, I just want to talk about um, some other artists that I think we can look at as indicative of this impulse who kind of are make artwork that is about the very act of making a mark, right? So in a very literal sense, this self-portrait um, by Kathy Colvitz. Uh, any kind of self-portrait is in a way a statement of I was here and I am here. Um, but also the way this is a work of art about herself as an art maker. It is her in the act of making a mark. And here she makes a single mark that is the mark of the piece of paper, but then her whole body in a way is created out of this very loose gestural mark. Um, and I think that, so gesture is strongly tied to this theme because when an artist's gesture is often viewed as their distinctive mark that sets them apart. I think you can also see that same in a different way, that same theme in the work of someone like Tapias, who creates artwork where he almost is like creating these ancient walls and all these different textures so that then the kind of the scratch marks that the graffito that he puts on them is part of that art. In terms of gesture, probably no artist has um, a career made built more out of their distinctive mark making. Uh, than de Kooning, who has uh, just a, one of the great abstract expression painters, and, and his work um, is gorgeous. And, but I also, in terms of that, that idea of the abstract, that abstract expressionist idea of the artist being somehow like in this uh, process of finding their essential mark making system, their essential voice in their in their hand, um, that can be can be mocked. So we have like um, we have one example. We have the Robert Motherwell here, or actually two Robert Motherwells, especially talking about LG of Spanish Republic, where it really kind of seems to represent that idea of the artist just putting down this one pure gestural mark, and then we have. Lichtenstein over here making a painting that is um, in some ways kind of um, putting the lie to that, uh, a painting that is um, that is saying, you know, like these big, you know, uh, gestural marks can, don't have to be made in a big gestural manner. And lastly, I want to end on this kind of idea. Sometimes um, making your mark doesn't have to be something done physically, it doesn't have to be done gesturally through your hand. It can be done conceptually. And I think uh, Jenny Holzer's piece here is very much a, a form of making a mark, just simply taking a space and doing, making a change to that space that raises people's attention and makes people think, wow, there's an artist at work here. Um, and so Jenny Holzer's work entirely works in text and uh, she's pretty famous for working with like uh, LED signs um, and also other kinds of materials where text is embedded into you know, like carved into surfaces but or projected. But uh, uh, this particular marquee piece I just find to be really um, intense and moving. I think in part because you could so easily walk by and not notice it. Just assume you're walking past a movie theater with movies written on the marquee. But instead, it says, it is in your self-interest to find a way to be very tender. So, um, yeah, I think that's about it that I want to say on the Making the Mark lecture. So the next lecture we're gonna, is going to kind of continue some of what we've been talking about here. We're actually going to explore this idea of gesturalness and expression and what does it mean to be expressive. We're going to explore that some more, as well as talking about what is a mark and what is a line and what is the most fundamental unit of art? Is it a mark or is it a line? All right, see you then.